good morning students today we are discussing about michelson interferometer in the last session we discussed about the neutering experiment in the neutering experiment we have calculated the wavelength of the sodium light or monochromatic light at the same time if you know the wavelength we are going to calculate the radius of curvature of the given planar convex lens at the same time we can calculate the refractive index of the liquid in the case of michelson interferometer it is also an example of amplitude splitting interferometer so what are the advantages of michelson interferometer when compared to the previous experiments so let us look at the applications of michelson interferometer so the using michelson interferometer we can calculate the thickness of the transparent plates so accurately and we can calculate the refractive index of the gases or liquids and one more advantage is when compared to the previous experiment here it is the measurement of coherence length of the spectral line that is if we consider a sodium light in the case of interning experiment there is an average wavelength of the sodium light that wavelength is 5893 angstrom units but in the sodium light there are two spectral lines are there that is sodium d1 line and sodium d2 line so for sodium d1 line the wavelength is 5893 angstrom units the other one is 5889 angstrom units suppose we could calculate the wavelength of the sodium d1 line or d2 line we cannot calculate by using the interning experiment by using the michelson interferometer we can calculate the separation distance between the two spectral lines of the same color by using the michelson interferometer so let us look at the principle of the michelson interferometer this michelson interferometer the works on the principle of partial reflection and refraction so let us look at the first uh, principle here in the michelson interferometer a beam of light from an external source is divided into two equal intensities by partial reflection and refraction these beams these beams travel in two mutually perpendicular directions and come together after reflection from the plane mirrors these beams overlap on each other and produces interference fringes i'll repeat one second in a michelson interferometer a beam of light from extended source is divided into two equal intensities by partial reflection partial reflection and partial refraction these beams travel in two mutually perpendicular directions and come together after reflection from plane mirrors these beams overlap on each other and produces the interference fringes so let us look at the construction part here this is the source is a monochromatic light source so that light which is coming from the source which is incident on the beam splitter so the beam splitter it is this is the glass plate which is kept at 45 degrees with respect to the mirror m2 and m1 these are the plane mirrors and the back side of this glass plate is coated with the silver so uh, the, the coating is small here this coating is small and the partial is silver here so light which is coming from the source is incident on the glass plate and moves it get reflected and refracted the reflection moving towards the mirror m2 which is placed perpendicular to the m1 this is also plane mirror m1 and m2 it get reflected and reflected from here and other one is refracted and moves towards the other mirror m1 get reflected and it reflected from the uh, silver coating here and comes here another one is coming like this this both the reflected and refracted rays get superimposed on each other and produces interference pattern this is the observer observing the interference pattern on the screen here so this is it with the uh, beam splitter 
which divides the light into two full half intensities. This mirror M1 and M2 are placed like this, exactly in the perpendicular manner. This mirror M1 and M2 are kept on carrying on. This either one of the mirror can be fixed, other one can be moved here. Suppose I want to move mirror M1, I can move a small displacement is out of 0.1 micrometer. That means that is the accuracy of that particular instrument so that it can move by 0.1 micrometer that much less displacement can be viewed. So mirror M1 and M2 are exactly perpendicular now. So this is the beam splitter. Now look at this. This uh, green line and this is reflected. This is a refracted now. So what is the advantage of this compensating glass plate here? This green line encountering three times through the beam splitter, whereas this uh, refracted component of the light is moving only crossing this G1 only two times. That means this path difference is more compared to the, this path difference. To compensate the path difference, we are keeping one more glass plate between the path of G1 and M1. So both these glass plates are kept made up of the same material of same refractive index, same thickness and same angle to 45 degrees is also kept at 45 degrees. So there is no coating for this particular glass plate. So this, plan, this glass plate is set to be the compensating glass plate. What you use for this to compensate the extra path difference traveled by the light ray. So let us look at this. The separation distance between the beam splitter and the mirror is D1, the other one is D2. So when observing from this, the observing from here, you are able to see only the mirror M1. As you can see, mirror only M2. Apart from that, we are able to see the virtual image of M1 in front of the M2. This is the virtual image. So the separation distance between this virtual image and the mirror M2 it appears like a, a parallel film which is separated by a distance of D. That D is equal to difference of D2 minus D1. So let us look at this. When we start observing from this here, I am able to see the two mirror images. There are two, that means there are two sources appearing from here S1 and uh, S double dash. So we can find the distance is 2D here. So if you incline angle theta, this becomes 2D cos theta. Look at this. Look at this the animation now. I am keeping this M1, the virtual image is M1 dash. I am moving only the mirror M2. Either you can move only one of the mirror, keeping one mirror is fixed. So when I am moving this, I can see the number of fringes appear or disappear from the center. So this is the fringe pattern we are observing in the case of Michelson interferometer. So here uh, the formula is two times of D because two times uh, the two times the distance between here and here. So the two times of D, two D cos theta, two D cos theta is equal to n lambda. So here the circle of fringes because of constant equal inclination, these fringes are said to be the high angle fringes. If you observe from here, so you can get only the 2D is equal to N lambda. Here, the light ray which is coming from the radar medium to the denser medium, there is an extra path difference that is equal to 180 degrees. Now uh, the phase difference is 180 degrees. So that we are getting other path difference is lambda by two. So that means we are going to get delta is equal to 2D cos theta plus or minus lambda by two. And then we consider less path minus. So I like to delta is equal to 2D cos theta plus or minus lambda by 2. Here the lambda by 2 you can consider if it is a glass field, lambda by 2. If not, you can go with only 2D and that is also correct. So here the most of the test book that prefer that 2D delta is equal to 2D cos theta. Here I am considering uh, plus lambda by 2 for the calculation part of it to explain uh, in a better way. Here this uh, angle is theta is equal to 0 here. This angle is theta. So theta difference is d2 minus d1. Delta is equal to 2d plus or minus lambda by 2. I am considering uh, 2d plus lambda by 2 for our reference. 
Suppose consider that the distance um, between this and these two are same. So d1 and d2 are same. So d becomes 0. So d becomes 0. Delta is equal to lambda by. When the optical path difference is equal to integer multiples of uh, lambda by 2, we are getting a destructive interference. That means we are going to get a dark, dark fringe here. Suppose I move the mirror of the mirror by either lambda by 4, then delta becomes lambda. So there is a condition for constructive interference. That means within the dark fringe, we are going to originate a other white fringe. Suppose I am going next by delta by either lambda by 2, then delta is equal to 3 lambda by 2. So lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4, that becomes lambda by 2. So for final delta becomes 3 lambda by 2, one second we are going to get the destructive interference. That means within the white fringe, there is origination of dark. So next one is, suppose I am moving another lambda by 4, let us see now. D is equal to 3 lambda by 4, then delta becomes 2 lambda. That means once again, a condition for constructive Within the dark fringe, we are going to arise one more white fringe. Like this, the number of fringes is going to be appear from the center. That means there are infinite number of fringes are existing from the in, existing in the center. So this is the pattern. Here I am moving mirror M2. M1 is fixed, M1 dash is the virtual image. So there is a parallel film which is formed between the virtual image as well as M2 mirror. So when you move in mirror M2, the parallel film thickness goes on in degrees or degrees. So this is the pattern we have for in the case of Michelson interferometer. mirror. The experimental setup, this is the source. This is the converging lens which converts the light exactly into parallel beam of light. So this is the beam splitter. This is the mirror. Either is mirror. This is the movable mirror. This is the fixed mirror. This is the compensating glass plate. The light which is coming from the uh, converging light falls on here, get reflected, moving towards the mirror, movable mirror. Other one's part get refracted and moves across the fixed mirror. One second get reflected, comes from this. Other which is coming from this particular part. So finally, both are get interfered and we are observing the interference pattern that is nothing but hiding the fingers. So look at this, when d is equal to 0.15m, how many number of fringes are there? Suppose when I am moving by 0.15 to 0.1498mm, then it corresponds to 500 will disappear at the central fringe will become a dark. That means that mean number of fringes are going to be disappeared from here. Look at this. So this is the use of compensating glass plate to compensate the, uh, the fringes here. Now, then in the previous case, both mirror M1 and M2 are perpendicular. Suppose I am changing the one of the mirror by some angle theta. So look at this. The, it appears like a towards a wedge shaped film. So initially there is a parallel film here. Coming this becomes a wedge shaped film. So here what happens? It appears like this. At exactly 45 degrees, we are getting the perfect parallel fringes. Still you are moving, so there is a change. Whenever there is a parallel film, this is the curvature turns to the side, so it becomes little bit a parallel here. Now, similarly, the parallel it appears like this. So this is about the, when the mirror M1 and M2 kept an angle theta with respect to each other. Then, what is the difference between the neutroning experiment and Michelson interferometer? In the case of neutroning experiment, two mu t cos r is equal to in lambda here uh, the thickness is variable the thickness is variable here whereas here there is a angle of incidence is and the d is fixed whereas theta is variable here in the case of circular fringes because of locus of equal thickness of the film here in the case of neutral ring whereas here the circular fringes because of equal inclination of light of incidence in the case of neutron rings I have minimum or at the center Whereas in the case of Michelson interferometer, and it is a uh, infinite, the maximum order at the center in the case of Michelson interferometer. So what are the applications of Michelson interferometer? The first application is to determine the wavelength of the light. Suppose when you move in the mirror M1 by small distance, there is a certain number of fringes may appear or disappear. 
by identifying the number of fringes 